Hello, my darlings. Today I bring you another Aizawa fanfiction. I hope you enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed writing it. However, before we dive right into it, I would like to remind you that I have a merch store and a Patreon. However, there's the case that you uh, might not be able to donate any real money. In that case, I would like to ask you to watch the video until the end, like or dislike it, and comment something down below. Anything, really. This way you can ensure that YouTube, in other words, Susan, pays me. Lastly, if you're new here and you think I'm worth it, please hit the subscribe button and join my beautiful, darling, doll army. Now, please, enjoy the show. Life wasn't really nice to you. Somehow, you had found yourself in a rundown apartment with cheap furniture your grandma would call tacky. A closet filled with unmatching second-hand clothes and horrible neighbors who, even though they could not spell the word hypocritical, would perfectly fit into a dictionary description of that word. Of course, you yourself weren't the image of perfection either. Your ex-husband was a violent sociopath. You weren't by pretty much everyone to not go with him. But there was this nagging, unconscious feeling deeply hidden inside you. A sadness. A wish. The wish of utter self-destruction. In truth, you just wanted the right excuse to end it all. Because of this you were diagnosed with depression, social phobia, and other things that had long names attached to them. In these days, the only contact you really had were the local cat population. Your quirk, ironically called Cat Lady, allowed you to manipulate the behavior of felines through the use of music. This included singing, humming, and the use of music instruments. The louder, the more cats would be attracted. While this quirk would have some uses in the world of heroes, your parents could not afford the higher education necessary to further your ability to anything useful. However, your dad had owned an antique shop that had an old piano in it, which he had given you lessons on until he eventually managed to sell it when you turned 12. It was also in this apartment you had taken a handful of the pills your therapist had prescribed. And also this apartment you had returned a few months later after a long and tedious hospital stay. After returning home you decided the first thing you needed to do was play your piano. It had come with the apartment. Some keys didn't work and some were outright missing. But it was actually the reason you were interested in the property to begin with. Your fingers danced across the keys, at least the ones that were there, still remembering the right strokes to attract the local cats. And soon there were multiple meows coming from your balcony. With a soft smile you went into your kitchen to grab some of the dry food from inside one of the cupboards. And slowly you proceeded to the balcony door. Outside the night stretched across the skyline. Rain slowly drizzled from a thick layer of clouds. The only thing distracting from the sound of the endless pitter patter of rain were distant police sirens and the meowing of your cats. You had just finished up filling your first out of three food bowls when your doorbell rang. With a heavy sigh, you turned on your heels and slowly trotted towards your apartment door. After opening it, your mood immediately went sour. In front of you stood Akira, 
the sleazy guy from the apartment in front of yours. He was wearing his signature cheap leather jacket, open, no shirt under it. At least this time he was wearing underpants. From his open door you could just barely make out the silhouette of a very skinny woman who was rubbing her naked body all over his furniture. Akira was a somewhat known drug dealer. Too small for the police to bother with, but big enough to have a bunch of coked up girlfriends who would pay him large sums for whatever he was selling that day. His unnaturally handsome face was distorted into an angered form. Are you out of your fucking mind? He bellowed. With each passing word, his voice got louder. We all had it with you and your bloody cats! By now, he was getting so loud, even the coked up bimbo in his flat stopped moving for just a split second. Usually when seeing the guy's face, your body filled itself with anxiety. But something was different. Maybe it was your near-death experience. But anger bubbled up inside you. In a calm voice, you retorted. If you don't change your tone right now, you'll be going back to your whore with a broken nose. Don't you dare tell me about my fucking tone! After all, if it's okay for you to play that fucking piano of yours in the middle of the fucking night... Once again, you couldn't peel your eyes away from the girl in his flat. She seemed to have found a bag of regular baking flour, and was right now snorting it through her nose, cackling like a little girl who stole her mother's cookie jar. Do you think anybody cares about your stupid cats? They're a nuisance! Your mental barrier was faltering, you could feel it. If you didn't disarm this situation, you would be faced with a mental breakdown. You just knew it. You quietly inhaled, and then shouted, Go fuck yourself, Akira! Before slamming the door into his face. Your heart felt like it would jump out of your chest, and you sank down on the ground. Your back pressed against the hardwood door. Next time I will call the pest control! You heard a muffled shout. Before a loud bonk indicated he went back to his unfinished business. And soon loud dubstep music echoed from the hallway. With a heavy sigh you stayed on the floor until your heartbeat returned to normal. But your turbulent night wasn't over just yet. Just when you had gotten your bearings and entered your living room, a shadow on your balcony caught your attention. You turned with a perplexed look on your face. It was a striking young man with long black hair and a scar under one of his eyes. You tilted your head in confusion. A robber would have already entered. So would a killer. And it didn't seem like he was carrying any weapons. The way he patiently looked towards you filled you more with curiosity than fear, which surprised even yourself. And with only a slight hint of it, you slid open the glass door. So you're finally out, huh? His voice was deep and clear. Uh, who are you? Was the only thing you could think of as a reply. He chuckled, a half-smoked cigarette in his mouth. Name's Eraserhead. You rolled your eyes. And what's your name? He smirked. Not allowed to tell civilians as long as I'm on patrol. You cross your arms skeptically. And what do you want, hero? He took a drag from his cigarette. See, when you come home from your little incident. He raised an eyebrow. The pills, he explained. 
Why are you the one calling the ambulance? Disappointment and anger was bubbling up inside you again, but you didn't really know why. Why are you holding a grudge for surviving after all? I was. You should have kept your door closed. Wouldn't have gotten suspicious. You scratched over your right cheek. What do you mean? He grinned. Your apartment is on my patrol road, and your glass door was closed. You only close it when you're outside, which you definitely weren't. Now you're the one who chuckled. All by it being sarcastic. So you're stalking me, huh? He shook his head. No. I'm supposed to protect people, be it from villains or themselves. Which means I notice these kinds of things. Uh, can I have one? You asked while pointing at his smoke. From someone as belt, he summoned a pack. With an appreciative thanks, you took one out. When you were searching for us later, you put the butt into your mouth. There we go, he said before lighting it. You took a deep drag and then leaned over your balcony's fencing. Have you been checking my apartment daily? He asked after a few minutes. Not daily, he began. Once a week. So, not more than five times. You smirked. Time didn't fly by in the hospital. You had stopped counting after day 20 and just accepted it. So, you're my night in. You looked him up and down. <laughs> in black armor? Huh? Erasure didn't immediately reply, but he gave you a soft smile. Yeah, I guess. He obviously wasn't a popular hero. That much was clear. No hero with prestige on their head would even consider patrolling in your rundown neighborhood. And judging by his rugged yet handsome appearance, he only put some, but not all, effort into personal grooming. At least he smelled pleasant. Once the pack of smokes was half empty, he climbed onto the balcony's edge, ready to leap over to the building next to yours. Uh, will I ever see you again? You asked with hesitation, and he tilted his head to look at you. Counter question. You gulped. Do you still hate yourself? Without really wanting to, you nodded, and he sighed. How does tomorrow sound? 9 p.m. He gave you a cocky smirk. Why not have a snack ready? Uh, also wouldn't mind some chicken tenders. <laughs> Bye. And with that he jumped. You looked after him as he climbed up the other building's wall onto the roof. And you smiled. Guess I got a date now. You said to yourself, still in awe of what just happened.